Hi everyone, my name is Ryan Booz. I'm a developer advocate here at Timescale. And for Timescale Tuesday this week, I thought I would start another multi-part series around creating sample data uh, to use with Timescale and quite honestly, other databases, uh, but really focusing on time series data. We get this question a lot as people start to explore Timescale in relation to other time series databases, uh, whether it be a, a NoSQL database like Mongo or InfluxDB. And, and how do you generate data that allows you to compare each of these options, understand how some of the features work. And so I want to show you a lot of the ways that, that I use this. Other people at Timescale use these techniques. You'll find them in our tutorials and just give you a, a head start in exploring all the features of Timescale when maybe the data you have easy access to doesn't really satisfy the needs of exploring these kinds of features. So today I just want to review what they are, and then over the next few weeks we'll actually dive into each one for 10 or 15 minutes, look at ways you can use them, uh, and then probably the last part of this series will be actually exploring the time series uh, benchmark database suite, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, because there's a lot to that and it in and of itself requires a, a multi-part series of just generating the data and querying the data and so forth. So let's go ahead and look at what these things are. And, and this is a slice. Uh, there are certainly other options out there. There's a lot of good community input into tools like this. Uh, there are other tools than what I'm going to describe, but these are things that we use often here at Timescale. You'll see us do it as part of demos. You'll see us do it in tutorials, and I just wanted to, to talk about them here. So the first is uh, generate data. It's a Postgres uh, function that allows you to generate a series of data, and it uses uh, numbers and dates uh, as the way to do that. Then we have the time series benchmarking suite, which I just talked about. This is an open source tool that we've generated and allows anyone to use this to, to benchmark not just time, uh, time scale, but also a lot of other time series databases. And it's a community effort. And so there are a lot of uh, plugins for things like, uh, you know, uh, Influx and Timestream and other things. Then there's just good old sample data sets. You know, that's the one nice thing about most uh, SQL databases. There's a way to ingest data pretty easily in the form of JSON or, um, or CSV files. And so we provide a lot of those here at Timescale, and you'll find lots of them throughout. Uh, I'll point you to some samples and places you can find lots and lots of free CSV data that might be useful for your specific use case to better understand if Timescale would be a useful tool for, tool for you. And then uh, really the last big thing is things like APIs and SDKs. Now there are thousands and thousands of programs, a lot of which uh, to focus around time series data. And so I'll point you to a few that we know about and we use for some samples here. And, and hopefully that will help you start to uh, figure out and think about ways that you could use these tools, again, to generate data and think about how time scale might be a good option for you. Now there is one other one I'm putting here, and this is Prometheus and PromScale. So a lot of our users are finding that Timescale is a great uh, way to store your data from PromScale, uh, from Prometheus, particularly using our tool called PromScale. I won't spend a lot of time on it in the series, but I just want to make sure that you knew it's available. So if you do have a Prometheus setup, this is one way to store your data and query it, both with PromQL and with SQL. And so uh, it, it deserves a Timescale Tuesday video of its own at some point, but it is a way to get a lot of data quickly if you have this infrastructure set up. So let's go ahead and look at each of these options briefly to get you set up and prepared for what we'll talk about over the coming weeks. All right, so I'm at our website and this is the tutorial section of our docs. And I show you docs often, almost every week we do these videos. At some point I come to docs because there's a lot here that can be helpful in you evaluating and using Timescale. Now with tutorials, there are a few others I'll talk about in a minute. But one that exists is near the bottom of the list here and it says simulate IoT sensor data. Now this is a helpful one to remember if you go to, and you just need to generate data uh, quickly with that time series, uh, that series function that Postgres provides called generate series. We talk about how to pretend to generate some fake sensor data and under step two, you will actually see the insert statement that I often use some form of this to generate something about devices over time with some kind of readings, whether it's CPU temperature or something else. 
so this is an example you can quickly grab. You, there's a, a way to create a table in here and then generate data quickly to begin querying it. Now, generate series, as I said, is a Postgres function. There is documentation on their website. And it's fairly simple. You're generating a series from a beginning point to an ending point, a start and a stop. So it works on either numerics, uh, you know, numbers, and then you can provide, if you use a number, you can provide a step value. So the increment between each of the, to get from start to stop. And then you can also use it with time. And so you can use dates and timestamps to uh, provide a beginning and an ending time. If you do that, you must provide a interval so it knows at what interval it's going from date to date and time to time. All right, so you'll see us use that often. That's obviously one of the things that we use when we're looking at time series data. The other thing I thought I'd point to, and I'll uh, look at this again next week when we do more with Generate Series, is there's a great article on, uh, this is actually a tool called Chart.io, and they have a nice little website called uh, Data School, and they have an article about generating data with, um, with Generate Series. Ways to do just random data, ways to do growth, uh, ways to do exponential growth up and down over a specific time. So some really neat ways that you can uh, look at this. There's a couple other examples that are very similar to this that I've seen to generate, say, uh, realistic but fake data maybe for website traffic that grows over time. Uh, and you need to see as you insert data, you could look at previous values to make sure that the data you're generating is in line and growing with historical data. So a lot of opportunities to use something like Generate Series to start to understand how timescale works. Okay, so the Time Series Benchmarking Suite is a GitHub project that you can freely go access. It's at the Timescale repo. I'll link to it below. Now, this is not just a benchmarking suite. Although that is what we use it for, when you read all of our benchmarking blog posts, uh, we put everything we do here. There have been a number of community contributions for other systems. Uh, there are even some pending pull requests for things like, uh, or uh, I don't know if the pull request is there, but I've seen people uh, being ready to use it for MySQL and other things like that. So it, it is absolutely one way that you can compare multiple databases with the same data and the same types of queries. But it's also a great tool for generating a lot of unique fake data quickly to test and see both the features of Timescale and maybe even how your system performs uh, or maybe you're, you're hosting somewhere like Timescale Cloud or Timescale Forge and you want to know hey, what does it look like to host on a two CPU VPM, v, uh, VM or, or instance or a four CPU service or instance? And so that's a, a great way to just to benchmark performance of each system. And so we provide two data sets currently here that we've generated and we've had some contributions for. One is a DevOps data set. Uh, you can run either just one table, which I often do, it's called CPU only. That creates one table with 10 readings for CPU data uh, for fake computers. The other is just other kinds of network and CPU and uh, Postgres data. You know, they're, they're tables that are supposed to produce data for things that you might be, uh, you know, monitoring in a DevOps environment. So we, if you just do the full DevOps suite, it's 10 tables. Each table produces 10 different metrics about that kind of thing. And they're all related back to some kind of host or system. And then we have an Internet of Things uh, project, which we've begun. And this is tracking kind of, it's supposed to track like a trucking company, uh, both, you know, the where the trucks have been, kind of their location, uh, which is not real. So you'll get some, some really interesting things if you pretend to try and map that. Uh, but things like their, their gas level, their fuel mileage, um, you know, how far their truck has gone, things like that. And so it, both are, are good and unique cases, and it's really easy to spin up TSBS and generate unique sets of data for your use case, right? Do you have 50,000 devices that are generating data uh, across multiple tables every minute? Great. You can set up the DevOps suite to generate data for 50,000 devices every minute over 10 tables. And then you can start to see both how fast it inserts, uh, depending on your environment, and how some of the queries might uh, react within the environment you have. All right, so I'm back at our tutorials, and it's for good reason. In our documentation, we provide a lot of sample data that you can grab 
and the scripts to provide uh, to create the tables that you need to insert that data. So at the top of our tutorial section, we have really two different tutorials that provide data that we use for a lot of other things. So Hello Timescale is our current kind of getting started with Timescale. Now I will tell you that this is actually undergoing a revamp and pretty soon you're going to see a facelift on Docs. And what is currently Hello Timescale is going to be expanded and it's going to become a, a really fully featured integrated getting started example so that you can from start to finish get data and, and intro to, into each of the major features of Timescale. The current Hello Timescale does provide a 10 gigabyte uh, data file of taxi data from, I believe it's the year 2016, uh, in New York City. And it's really interesting because over a month of time, you can see uh, it's about 10 gigs. It's, it's a few, maybe 10 or 11 million rows of data. Uh, and so we use that data set for a number of the other tutorials that you'll find here uh, because it does have a lot of features that you can do numerous things with, like time series forecasting. The second one that I circled here is analyzing cryptocurrency. Now, again, the data set there is both provided for you, I believe it's from 2019, but Avthar did this, uh, this tutorial maybe a year ago, and he actually provided a Python script that you can use with some table information uh, to register with a website and start to get current crypto uh, data feeds. This might be a good starting place to get some really quick, unique information about something like cryptocurrency and it then is a data set that, again, we use through other uh, tutorials that you'll find here on our website. The last thing I'll show you is at the very bottom, if you go to the very bottom here or in the tree, you'll see that we do provide a couple other sample data sets. Now, again, these are a little bit older. It's something that we are in the process of refreshing. We're going to get some newer data sets. And actually, we're coming up with tools to try and keep these a little bit more, little bit more up to date. So every month or two, we'll refresh them to make sure they have more current data. Uh, we have the DevOps data set. Now, a lot of this was generated with a tool similar to TSBS. So it's not real data, but it's a way for you to grab a CSV file and quickly get things ingested. And then the other one is a weather data set. Uh, again, all of these have small, medium, and large, and they're described here on the screen of what they, they are. Now, the nice thing about this page is not just that we provide the data sets, and, and I'll do a video on this. Uh, we show you how to import it, and then we do give you just a couple, if I keep scrolling down here, for each data set, a couple of initial queries to get you started. Again, this is undergoing some, some updates, so you can expect to see some new queries there as well. So this is a great way through each of these tutorials and specifically through this sample data set page to grab some data to ingest quickly and start to see what timescale looks like for you. So one of the other ways that you can generate data fairly quickly is by using tools that other people provide. Now, I have uh, really no interest specifically in any one of the examples that I'm going to give you. It, they are just examples I've come across as I've been looking to do things like this, both for tutorials and for my own learning. So these are just three quick examples. There are honestly hundreds, if not thousands of these, usually on places like GitHub that people are providing these tools in various languages for you. So we do a lot here with both Go and Python in our examples. I happen to be more comfortable with Python. I'm gonna show you a couple of these examples quickly there. There's a lot of tools like this in all kinds of languages. So the first one I found was CryptoFeed. Now the unique thing here for me and why this was interesting is not just that it's cryptocurrency and a lot of people use timescale for crypto. Uh, this actually does not currently have a timescale feed in it, but it does have a Postgres backend. And so I'm actually looking to create the timescale backend and contribute it back. So that would be a nice little feature for our users. But it's a great way to see how you can take Python code, uh, compile it locally, make a couple changes, and use it for something like that. Uh, now, again, and I chose it because crypto is one of the things we see a lot of usage for with timescale, people tracking, tracking markets and trading pairs. I just thought it'd be interesting to show you that there is a tool out there if you don't know about it. Uh, the next one that we've looked at is uh, for the Open Weather Map system. So Open Weather Map is a, a way that you can get data from thousands, 20 plus thousand places across the world, uh, both local forecasts, uh, some historical data. You can actually provide and pay for access to more data. This is a, a Python toolkit uh, SDK that is very popular and it gives access to a lot of the information there. 
Now we're actually getting ready to use this for some of those new tutorials I've talked about because it's easy and it's something that you can quickly comprehend. Everyone knows weather. Uh, everyone steps outside at some point in their life and we are interested in whether it's going to rain, what the temperature is, and do I need heating or air conditioning. Uh, there's a lot here. They even do air quality data. This is a really nice toolkit and it uh, creates a very quick and easy way. As long as you get the table set up, you simply create the SQL and then with a very minimal amount of work in Python, you can ingest this data and insert it into your tables. Again, you'll see more of this in the future from us. We're going to use this as some of the examples, but a nice quick way to get data that is real and might be more in line with what you're trying to do. And the last thing, again, talking about data that is you know, time in nature, a lot of it's happening all the time you don't think about, is something like FlightAware. Now, I will say that FlightAware actually uses TimeScale for some of their backend storage and machine learning and what they do. So that's really exciting, but they also do provide an API to a lot of this data. And so it's yet another way uh, to look at something that might be close to what you're doing. This would do things with uh, you know, geospatial data, which is really exciting. So a number of options to get you thinking about how you could take some of these SDKs, particularly if you're a developer, uh, transform some of that data and insert it into Timescale. We're gonna look at more and more of these over the, over the coming weeks and months. So you'll get more examples of how to do this, but I just wanna make sure that you're aware that some of these things exist for you to uh, start to explore timescale. And so here we are back to the end. I hope that was helpful just to get you started thinking about the various ways you can quickly spin up a timescale instance, generate some kind of data for you to then test both the features of timescale and how that might work. Please subscribe uh, to our, you know, this channel. You'll get a lot of information week to week, uh, new things that we're getting ready to do as we uh, hire more developer advocates and other people to help provide you this information. Come join us in Slack. And then uh, to the left here, or to your left, I'm going to uh, link to the video of that benchmarking uh, video where I generated 20 million uh, data row, 20 billion data rows using TSBS on that single instance. Uh, just to, again, to get you thinking about how you can use this data to do something like that if you need to benchmark it. I hope this was helpful uh, to get you started. Again, come back over the next few weeks and we will begin looking at each of the ways that you can use these tools to generate that data and start to use timescale. Have a great week. Thank you so much. Take care.